This video covers D3 zoom for SVG lines and SVG paths. The structure of this video is as follows. The goal, D3 zoom for an SVG straight line, D3 zoom for a D3 generated SVG path, D3 zoom for an SVG path, and the summary. All right, let's get started. The goal. In the previous videos, we covered how to use the D3 zoom behavior to pan and zoom on a D3 generated SVG shape. You can see that we can zoom and pan not only on the figure and axis, but also the empty space. In this video, we are going to cover more advanced uses of the D3 zoom behavior. Specifically, we will cover three cases. The first case is the D3 zoom for an SVG straight line. You can see the panning and zooming of the SVG straight line basic shape as constructed using D3. The second case is the D3 zoom for an SVG path. You can see the panning and zooming of the SVG path as generated by the D3 path data generator. The third case is the D3 zoom for a complicated SVG path. You can see the panning and zooming of the complicated SVG path as constructed in the SVG path mini language. D3 zoom for SVG straight line. This is an SVG straight line basic shape generated by D3. The SVG straight line consists of an X1, Y1, X2, Y2 stroke width and stroke color. Note that we are not passing the X and Y variables through a D3 scale, so it will be drawn in the normal SVG coordinate space. Given what we have covered in previous videos, let's think through how we could create a zoom behavior for this line. When zooming in, we would want the line to get bigger in the drawing space. When zooming out, we would want the line to get smaller in the drawing space. When panning, we would want the line to move in the correct direction. In the case of the circle, when we zoom in, the radius increases to make the circle look bigger. When we zoom out, the radius decreases to make the circle look smaller. In the case of the line, when we zoom in, we want the line to get longer and thicker. And when we zoom out, we want the line to get shorter and thinner. For the circle, it is easy to make the connection that we want the radius to be multiplied by a number to make it bigger or smaller, which means we can use the d3.event.scale to get the zoom multiplier. For the line, we can make the connection that we want to use the d3.event.scale to scale up or scale down the width of the line. We just have to multiply the stroke width by the zoom multiplier to get the right behavior. However, for the length of the line, it's a bit harder to figure out how we can use the zoom multiplier. After all, in defining the SVG straight line, we do not actually define how long the line is. So we cannot tell D3 to multiply the length of the line by a multiplier. If we look at the very basic definition of an SVG line, we see that what we have to play with are the X and Y coordinates as well as the stroke width and stroke color. The X and Y coordinates are what control how long the line is due to defining where it starts and where it ends. So the solution to figuring out how to make the line longer or shorter will have to involve the X and Y coordinates. Taking a step back, let's think about the line. Is it really growing or is it appearing to grow? In the normal SVG coordinate system, the line should grow and shrink according to whether we are zooming in or out. However, in the SVG coordinate system with zoom behavior, the line doesn't actually grow or shrink. It stays the same length as described by the X and Y axes that have also zoomed in or out. Once we start thinking about the line in this way, we can see that it is the same thing as line panning. In one point of view, when we pan the line, we are moving it in the SVG coordinate space. However, in relation to the SVG axes, which are also changing, the line is staying in the same place. What this tells us is that we can use the scaling functions to not only do the panning, we can also use them during the zooming. As we zoom in or out, the domain of the x-axis scale and y-axis scale will change according to the zoom level. So when we use them to scale the line x and y coordinates, they will automatically draw them in the right place. 
which means that when we are zoomed in, the right place will appear farther apart than before. And when we are zoomed out, the right place will appear much closer together than before. So when we draw the initial line, this is the code that we will use. Note that from the start, we are already scaling the x and y coordinates so that they match the coordinates on the x and y axes, which means that in the redraw function, we will want to do the same thing. We will use the D3 zoom behavior redefined domain in the x-axis scale and y-axis scale. This will ensure that the line endpoints match up to where the SVG axis designates certain points. Also, note that we have to make sure to multiply the stroke width by the zoom scale scale multiplier. This will ensure that the line gets thicker as we zoom in and gets thinner as we zoom out. The rest of the code we used in the previous videos to create the SVG axes, scales, viewport, inner drawing space, and hidden rectangle will all stay the same. Next, let's take a look at how it behaves in the JavaScript console. This web page has the D3 library imported from the d3js.org website. We have opened the Chrome developer tools and are in the console section. We start by defining the variables used for the SVG viewport, inner drawing space, D3 margins, and the line we will draw. Note that the original line variable is a JavaScript object literal that defines the x1, y1, x2, y2, and stroke width for the line. The SVG straight line will go from 25, 25 to 125, 125. Next, we define the SVG viewport with a border. Remember that we add a border style to make it easier to see and that you shouldn't do it in a production environment. Next, we define the SVG scales and axes functions. These are the same scales and axes functions as defined in previous videos. Next, we define the D3 zoom behavior event listener function. The only changes here versus previous videos are that we select the lines as well as the redrawing of the lines. The redrawing of lines is comprised of scaling the x and y coordinates with the updated scale and multiplying the stroke width by the scale multiplier. Now that we have defined the event listener function, we define the d3 zoom behavior function. With the d3 zoom behavior and event listener function defined, let's create the rest of the visualization. We create the inner drawing space and the hidden rectangle that allows us to use the zoom behavior in empty space. Then we draw the X and Y axis on the screen. Then we create the initial drawing of the SVG straight line. Note that it is almost the exact same code as the redraw function. We do not multiply the stroke width by the default zoom scale here, as we know the default zoom scale is the number one. The last bit of code we create is the HTML div and span elements that will hold the key information regarding what the zoom behavior is doing as we zoom in and zoom out. And there we go, we have now entered all of the code. Let's explore the zooming and panning of the SVG straight line. You can see that it works with the line and axes for panning. You can see it works with zooming in and out. You can also see that as we zoom in and out, the thickness of the line changes. And of course, because we are using the hidden rectangle, we can use the empty space to trigger zoom behaviors. And with that, we have covered the basics of thinking about, creating, and redrawing an SVG straight line with D3 zoom behaviors attached to it. Let's next explore how to zoom in and out if we have more than one line connected to each other through a D3 generated SVG path. D3 zoom for D3 generated SVG path. This is an SVG path generated by D3 using the D3 path data generator function. The SVG path we are constructing is a triangle. It consists of X and Y coordinates for the three vertices and a doubling up of the starting point. The coordinates are passed to a D3 path data generator function that takes them in and creates the SVG path mini language instructions. These SVG path mini language instructions are then set as the D attribute of the SVG path element that is appended to the SVG element. Given what we have covered in previous videos and in this one, let's think through how we could create a zoom behavior for this path that draws a triangle. When zooming in, we want the triangle to get bigger in the drawing space. When zooming out, we want the triangle to get smaller in the drawing space. When panning, we want the triangle to move in the correct direction of the pan. In the case of the line, when we zoom in, we want the line to get longer and thicker. And when we zoom out, we want the line to get shorter and thinner. 
In the case of the triangle path, when we zoom in, we want the triangle to get bigger and the lines to get thicker. And when we zoom out, we want the triangle to get smaller and the lines to get thinner. For the line, we now know that we can use the d3.event.scale to scale up or down the width of the line. We also covered how we could use the updated x and y axis scales to have the change in relation to the zoom level. For the triangle, we can use the same principle as the line to scale up or down the width of the SVG path line. We just use the zoom multiplier to get the right behavior for the stroke width. However, for the SVG path mini language, it is a bit harder to figure out how we can use the zoom multiplier or updated domain x and y axis scales. After all, we do not want to start messing around with the SVG path mini language and figuring out how to change it as we are zooming and panning. If we look at how we define and create the D3 SVG path with the D3 path data generator function, we see that what we have to play with are the X and Y coordinates as well as the stroke, stroke width, and fill. The X and Y coordinates are what control the specific path segments of the triangle. So the solution to figuring out how to make the triangle change when zooming and panning will have to involve the X and Y coordinates. These are the SVG path mini language instructions that are generated after we run the data through the D3 path data generator function. You can see that we take in an array of points. We define a function that changes the points to SVG path mini language instructions. We feed those instructions into the D attribute of the SVG path. So we have three different places where we can modify the data to make it adhere to the zoom behavior. The original data set, the D3 path data generator, and the SVG path many language instructions. We never want to modify the original data set and we've already covered that we don't want to get into the SVG path many language. So where we want to modify the code according to the D3 zoom behavior is the D3 path data generator function. What this generator function does is to take in data and generate the SVG path many language instructions for that data. We define accessors for the X coordinate and Y coordinate so that it can get the data out of the array of X and Y coordinate JavaScript object literals in the original triangle data set. Using the X and Y scales makes sure that the points are drawn correctly on the X and Y axis we have defined in the inner drawing space. This means that they will match up on the number line on the x-axis and the number line on the y-axis. So when we draw the original triangle, it will use the default settings we have used for the x-axis scale and y-axis scale. Which means that in the redraw function, we will want to do the same thing. We will use the D3 zoom behavior redefined domain in the x-axis scale and y-axis scale. This will ensure that the points and lines in between will match up to where the SVG axis designates certain numbers. Also, note that we have to make sure to multiply the stroke width by the zoom scale multiplier. In this way, we do not change the actual SVG mini path language instructions, but the function that creates the SVG path mini language instructions. The rest of the code we used in the previous videos and earlier example to create the SVG axis, scales, viewport, inner drawing space, and hidden rectangle will all stay the same. Next, let's take a look at how it behaves in the JavaScript console. This web page has the D3 library imported from the d3js.org website. We have opened the Chrome developer tools and are in the console section. We start by defining the variables used for the visualization. Note that the original triangle variable is an array of JavaScript object literal objects that define the X and Y coordinates. Also note that we define the stroke width here so that we can use it later in the redraw function when we are changing the stroke width according to the zoom level. Next, we define the SVG viewport with a border. Next, we define the SVG scales and axis functions. Next, we define the D3 SVG path data generator function. Next, we define the D3 zoom behavior event listener function. The only changes here versus the previous examples are that we redefine the D3 SVG path data generator function and redraw the triangle path. The redefining of the D3 SVG path data generator function is what makes the zoom and path behaviors both work. 
We also redefine the stroke width attribute of the triangle path by multiplying it by the scale multiplier so that it grows and shrinks as we zoom in and out. Now that we have defined the event listener function, we define the d3zoom behavior function. Next, we create the inner drawing space and the hidden rectangle that allows us to use the zoom behavior in empty space. Then we draw the x and y axis on the screen. Then we create the initial drawing of the SVG path triangle. The last bit of code we create is the HTML div and span elements that will hold the key information regarding what the zoom behavior is doing as we zoom in and zoom out. And there we go. We have now entered all of the code. Let's explore the zooming and panning of the SVG path triangle. You can see that it works with the triangle and axes for panning. You can see that it works with zooming in and out. You can also see that as we zoom in and out, the thickness of the triangle lines change. And of course, because we are using the hidden rectangle, we can use the empty space to trigger zoom behaviors. And with that, we have covered the basics of thinking about creating and redrawing an SVG path that was created by the D3 SVG path data generator function with D3 zoom behaviors attached to it. Let's next explore how to zoom in and out as well as pan in an SVG path that is complicated and not generated by the D3 SVG path data generator function. D3 zoom for an SVG path. This is an SVG path from the Mozilla Foundation SVG path tutorial. The path D attribute contains SVG path mini language instructions. SVG knows how to generate an image from the path element D attributes SVG path mini language instructions. If we look at the actual picture that is generated by this path, it looks deceptively simple. Given what we have covered in previous videos and in this one, let's think through how we could create a zoom behavior for this path. When zooming in, we want the path to get bigger in the drawing space with thicker lines. When zooming out, we want the path to get smaller in the drawing space with thinner lines. When panning, we want the path to move in the correct direction of the pan. We have covered that for both the line and the D3 path data generator function path, we can use the D3.event.scale and updated domain X axis scale and Y axis scale functions to provide the correct zooming behavior, which should tell you that we are going to use the D3.event.scale and D3.event.translate to provide the correct zooming behavior for the SVG mini language path as well. In the previous examples, we were able to manipulate the X and Y coordinates either through direct manipulation or through manipulation of a function that was manipulating X and Y coordinates. In both cases, we were able to use D3 scales to change the domain of the D3 scale function in order to make correct transformations. What then are we supposed to do if all we have is the SVG path mini language instructions? We do not have X and Y coordinates that we can use. We only have the instructions. The only thing that we have is the SVG path element. More explicitly, what we have is an SVG element. This is the inner drawing space and the SVG axis X axis. Do you notice what is similar about both of them? What is similar is that they both use the SVG transform translate functionality to move an element around the SVG coordinate space. That sounds a great deal like the D3 zoom pan behavior, doesn't it? In fact, if we look at the inner drawing space, we can see that we are able to specify the X coordinate and Y coordinate numbers we want this SVG element to move. In this case, we use the margin dot left for the X coordinate movement and we use the margin dot top for the y coordinate movement. Note that we do not specify if these numbers are positive or negative, we just specify that these are the numbers we want to use. Through string concatenation and SVG transform translate functionality, these numbers are able to move the SVG element around. If we go back to the zoom behavior redraw functions we have used, we can see that it is possible for us to generate x and y translation numbers easily. We use the d3.event.translate variable to give us a vector that tells us how much the d3 zoom behavior has us moving, which means that if we use these in the SVG transform translate attribute of an SVG element, we can make it move as well, which means we can write the following and have it work correctly. 
Since the pan vector is a two element array, it will use the SVG transform translate correctly to move the path element, which is great because it means that we can use this in the redraw event listener function. Every time the zoom behavior is triggered, we will be able to pan correctly because of the pan vector. Let's step back and look at what the SVG transform can do. Mathematically, the SVG transform lets you apply any type of matrix transformation. For those of us who have taken or remembered linear algebra, you will realize how powerful this is. For the rest of us, not to worry, the SVG transform attributes helps us out. It helps us by defining several transform definitions so that we do not have to figure out how to use a matrix to do it. What it also defines is a scale transformation. This definition comes from the Mozilla SVG tutorial. What it means is that we can scale the X coordinates up or down, as well as scale the Y coordinates up or down. Note that if the Y is not provided, it is assumed to be equal to X, which means if X is positive and we do not specify a Y, then Y will be positive as well. Y will also be equal to X. So everything will stretch in the X direction as much as it will stretch in the Y direction which really means that we can treat the scale definition of the SVG transform attribute as a zoom. If we put a 2 in the scale, then it means we want to stretch the image to twice the size in the X plane. If we don't put in a Y, then it will assume that Y is equal to X and it will use a 2 as well, which means it will stretch the image to twice the size in the Y plane, which really means that we have zoomed in a scale of 2. This will work in the same way if we zoom out and use a number less than 1. So we can use the D3 zoom behavior to affect the SVG transform attribute, which in turn affects the SVG elements. This means that we can write the following in the event listener function. Once we know the scale multiplier from the zoom event, we can pass it to the SVG transform scale function and it will scale up or down the path which means that our zoom will work perfectly normal. It will zoom in and out depending on what the zoom behavior is doing. By combining the two behaviors, we can replicate the full D3 zoom behavior. The transform translate will take care of the panning. The transform scale will take care of the zooming, which means that in the full redraw function, we will want to make sure we are using the zoom behavior d3.event.translate and d3.event.scale. In this way, we are not changing the actual SVG Minipath language instructions that created the SVG path, we are just transforming the path. The D attribute of the path stays the same. It is just that the transform attribute will be added, which will affect how slash where the picture is drawn. Next, let's take a look at how it behaves in the JavaScript console. This web page has the D3 library imported from the d3js.org website. We have opened the Chrome developer tools and are in the console section. We start by defining the variables used for the visualization. Note that the specific SVG path mini language instructions are assigned to the variable SVG path instructions. We will use this to set the D attribute of the SVG path element the first time we draw it. Next, we define the SVG viewport with a border. Because we do not use an X and or Y axis for this visualization, we do not define the X axis scale, Y axis scale, X axis function, nor Y axis function. Next, we define the D3 zoom behavior event listener function. The changes here are that we removed the updating of the X and Y axis. What we added is the transform translate and transform scale attribute definitions to the SVG path element. If there was more than one path we wanted to transform, then we would want to apply the transform attribute to an SVG group element. Now that we have defined the event listener function, we define the D3 zoom behavior function. Next, we create the inner drawing space and the hidden rectangle that allows us to use the zoom behavior in empty space. Note that this time we make the hidden rectangle light blue to designate what the inner drawing space actually is, otherwise everything would look like empty space. This is important since the inner drawing space is the one with the zoom behavior, which means that the D3 margins do not do the zoom behavior. So coloring the rectangle blue lets us know that the zoom only works inside of the blue region. 
Then we create the initial drawing of the SVG path. Note that we add the path to its own SVG group element in order to keep things in their own compartments. Also note that we use the SVG path instructions variables to pass the complicated SVG path mini language instructions to the D attribute of the SVG path. The last bit of code we create is the HTML div and span elements that will hold the key information regarding what the zoom behavior is doing as we zoom in and zoom out. And there we go. We have now entered all of the code. Let's explore the zooming and panning of the SVG path. You can see that it works with the SVG path for panning. You can see that it works with zooming in and out. You can also see that as we zoom in and out, the thickness of the lines of the path change. So even though we are using the SVG transform translate and SVG transform scale, we are able to make it behave in the same way as when we were altering the D3 linear scale domains. And of course, because we are using the blue rectangle, we can use the empty space around the path to trigger zoom behaviors. And with that, we have covered the basics of thinking about creating and redrawing an SVG path based on D3 zoom behaviors. Throughout this video, we covered how to think about, create, and redraw SVG straight lines and SVG paths based on the D3 event scale and D3 event translate numbers. For SVG straight lines, we alter the linear scale function domains based on the zoom behavior. For SVG paths generated by D3, we alter the D3 path data generator function based on the zoom behavior. For SVG paths, we alter the SVG path transform translate and transform scale attributes based on the zoom behavior. These techniques will be very useful in regular data visualizations, force layout diagrams, as well as geographic visualizations. The Summary This video covered the goal of this video, D3 zoom for an SVG straight line, D3 zoom for a D3 generated SVG path, D3 zoom for an SVG path, and The Summary.